come on down to the Hoonigan Brake Shop. We'll get y'all done up real good. What's up, bad boy? High five. <laughs> so Dan needed some help with Shark Heart. Can't imagine what he needs me for other than my voluptuous hips or something to do with a hammer. Or he just needs Don to eat something. So let's check it out. Danger Dan or Magic Dan. Ready to help? Or Fab Daddy Dan. <laughs> What's going on, man? I got a job for you, right? For me? I know you hate that. Oh, I don't hate it. I just think it's funny. <laughs> so you want to rip that baby off for me? You, that's what you brought me out here for? Yeah. You want to, look. What if you built it too good? You're going to look like a fool. Look, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it might be stronger than you think. Up, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be easier than that. Look, you stand on it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Oh, yeah. Making some progress. Now I can't wait to see what you do with it. That was the easy part for I'm me. I'm glad though. you brought me out here for some destruction, man. <laughs> You're sitting at that desk just I'm getting. I'm a little left out of shark cart because I can't weld. I can't do any of that fancy stuff you do, but I can destroy it. More destruction. Yeah. Don, what you think? <laughs> Anything else? You good? Well, I think we're good for now, man. I, I gotta start cutting stuff up. I'll come check you out later. All right. Bye, Don. All right, thanks to some destruction from Hurt, I'm going to start building some plates for the bash bars. I wanna make them removable. First things first, I'm gonna grind all that down where the temporary crap was. So I ground off all the old welds, which you saw was pretty hard for her to break. Now I'm gonna make another plate for that. I'm gonna make two of them for each one to match. So there'll basically be three plates then. So this is just to box it off, finish the frame rail. One will be welded on here with some through bolts and then one bolted to it for the start of the base plate for the bash bar and everything else. The visibility over here kind of sucks. So I'm gonna take the air box off, you know, unplug the MAF and Pull the airbags off, get it out of my way. And then I'll probably also undo this uh, lower rad line to get that out of the way so I can clean this all up really nicely and uh, get started on the plates and weld those in so I'm not damaging this when I'm welding it. All right, I made four identical plates, gonna weld two of them on where the frame rail's in, and then bolt the other two on, and when the bender gets here, we'll bend up the front bars. For today's plan, I had to shuffle some stuff aside, our shipping kind of got delayed with our benders. So I want to do the little man seat, install this bad boy so us small guys can get in and be in a fixed bucket and fit nicely. Also, so the harnesses work rather than a stock seat, which is pretty dangerous. I'm gonna show you the wrong way to put in a hydraulic handbrake because we don't have the right tools for that as well. After all that, the new bender should be here. Never even use it. Don't know how to use it. I don't even know how it works. Set up now to make the little man seat brackets so we can fit in there nicely. So I just got everything tacked up uh, in the right seating position. It looks a little rough right now, but I'm gonna trim some other stuff down and then put in some more gusses to make it really strong. But this will be the seating position for a short folk. So I got the brace all welded up for the seat bracket. Just have to install it. Um, see if it fits right for all of us short guys and then I want to put the handbrake in the upright I'll probably keep this just to keep it from rolling when we are parked. The challenge is I have Two different sets of people. I got really tall people really short people 
So we want to put that in a position that we can all reach it for the two different seating positions. So I'm going to have to try everybody out and see how everybody fits and that we're all comfortable. So I got the seat mounted in its place, ready to go. Next I want to install the hydro. Thinking about that for a position as I spoke with her earlier. I'm gonna want to weld that in first to get the plumbing all right. What I want to do right now is make sure that this is all possible and there's a T fitting underneath and that I can block off the front successfully and then pipe everything to the rear and do 100% rear braking, 100% front braking. It's gonna be weird, but it'll work. Follow the brake lines. So it looks like the T fitting is right here in this back well. I'm gonna pull this fitting out here and then replace that line and bring it all the way up through the trans tunnel here and poke it up through there. So I'm gonna replace that entire line and then the hard line goes all the way over here to the other side. So running from the hydro to here is what we have to do. And that'll give us 100% rear braking. What I wanted to do is cut that rear brake line off coming from the master cylinder and I got this little block off here. That stops all the braking from the rear and it'll force the pedal to go only to the front brakes. Now I'll have to remake the entire rear section so we can have 100% rear braking through that. So this is a really common handbrake setup. The Willowood master cylinder and bracket with the ASD. A lot of guys use this setup. So one thing I want to do is mount this flat and I'm going to have a pretty thick bracket to hold this down but I won't have room to put it in, so I'm gonna weld this to it. But to get it to sit flat, they have this like powder coat on it and I hate it. So I just kind of grind that off so it sits flush and then also kind of file out the stuff on the inside so it slides in and out. It's aluminum, it's not gonna rust. First things first, make sure I drill these holes right. Looks good to me. Probably get a shorter bowl for that one. This will be removable. I'm gonna tack the back one underneath right here and we'll weld around it so it doesn't move so we can do it in place and then weld this to the chassis. And that'll be a good location. Quick update, got that bad boy welded in. Secure, feels like a good position. I got excited and I pulled it and it squirted into my mouth and it tastes terrible. But the next step after I drilled this hole would be to run the lines to the rear to that little block right there and then we'll bleed it and test it out see if it works today's chart list one meditate Om bender, bender, bender. check Two, install brake lines. I'm gonna show you a little tutorial on how to do that. Bleed the brakes. The step three, I gotta show Kyle because he's gonna have to help me. He doesn't know how to do it. Four, we'll test it, make sure everything works fine. Five, I think we're supposed to get a bender today. If it shows up, I'm gonna be really happy. You'll be happy because we can get moving on this and I'll show you some more cool stuff. Well, let's get started. So I pulled the rear wheels off. First thing I'm gonna do is pull this rear line off and then show you how to make a flare for it. But I'll bend, bend one end of it first or start a flare on one end and then work up to the handbrake itself. So I like to start with a good clean cut using a pipe cutting tool and then file the edges just barely just to get the swarf off. So it's nice and clean. We have a good surface for the brake fittings when we're doing the flare. So we have the new nut. Slide that over first. You don't want to have any creases here, otherwise you won't be able to get that around it if you bend it. So you can kind of see here what's going to be the size of it. And generally for like a Japanese vehicle, you're going to use this number five here. So what you do is you want to have this poking through here if you can see that. And if you can see this here, there's one little ridge. You want that the, the depth of that ridge. And when we get that settled where it needs to be, which is about there, we'll lock it down. It's pretty tight, you don't want it to move. So as you can see here, if we can get some light on it, that's about the 
top of that ridge there. And then we're gonna flip this baby over. And that way. So we're gonna start that really evenly. And just a bit of pressure to get that to bubble out. You don't have to go all the way down and crush it. Just pretty snug. So it starts to bubble out and then we'll back this off. And then we're going to put this back in to give it the flare. And again, you don't have to go crazy and crush the line. If you go too tight, it'll split on the end and that'll create a leak. You can see how that's now even with this. There's a little divot, as you can see in one of these here. Now that's even with that divot and that's gonna give us the nice ceiling surface from the outside. And this will fit right in there. And that's gonna be our ceiling surface then. So now what I wanna do is just get a general length of how long it should be because I got too long of a reel. Well, 42, 50 and then we'll do another foot. Just for clearance. Let's say 62 inches. So I'm gonna start from this end here, put a bend in, kinda go this direction, up through the trans tunnel. Hopefully it's a little bit too long. I feel like it is, because we need a little bit extra. I'm leaving the old line in it because I want to do this correctly instead of just 100% rear brakes. I'll probably end up running a dual caliper setup in the future. Straighten these lines up a little better after I get the general idea, but I just want to feed it up through the hole that I made. I always do it just a little bit long in case I screw up. I told you, I cut it long for a reason, because if I screw up, this is for a bubble flare, and this is not a bubble flare, but I didn't notice because I was too excited. It's the right thread pitch, but I don't want a bubble flare, I want an inverted flare like this, so it can accept it all the way. I don't want to strip this out, so I'm going to pull this back off, cut it out, and I had to order a new one of these, so part shop's going to bring that down. So I had the wrong part. I got the right part. I'm gonna put that back on, reflare it, and then we're gonna bleed the brakes. So I got the right part, flared it, put it in nice and snug, somewhat bent the line. I wanna check for leaks before I actually put it in nice. It's run all the way through the tunnel, down to the back block here, and this is where it splits from side to side, this caliper, and then this one goes to the other side. So now we're gonna bleed it. Well, today we're gonna be bleeding some rain. <laughs> What's up? What's up, What Zach? did you just say? I don't even know what you said. Man, I don't know, it's late. All right, yeah, it is. So what are we gonna do here? Well, I just uh, put this hydro in, installed that bad boy. Skirt! And I gotta bleed it, so I'm gonna use Kyle to bleed it. Oh, cool. And uh, he's never bled brakes before, so I think he needs to learn. It's like a twofer. The more you know. The more you know. All right, yeah. So we need to fill the reservoir. Go about there. Okay. So keep an eye on that. And then we're gonna pull this. Like, just like you would pump the front brake. Yeah. So just pump it a few times until you feel a little bit of pressure and then hold it. I'm gonna bleed it. Like I'm gonna crack that open. Yeah. And it's gonna kind of let free. Okay. And you'll feel it come all the way in. Don't have to be cranking on it, but just let it come all the way to a stop. All right and then I'll tell you when and you let go and then do it again. And what you're doing is releasing all the, all the air? air? Yeah. Okay. All right, Kyle, give her a few cranks. One, two, three, and hold it. All right, crank it again. Feel that pressure building? Yep. And hold it. The importance of holding that all the way back when he's got this uh, bleeder valve open, so if you were to like open it back up, right, it would just suck air back in yeah, and then we just, much. whole thing would be <laughs> yeah. effed. You get now, that side feels pretty strong, doesn't it? Like give it a few pumps? Yeah, you can see the yeah. whole trans tunnel moving. Look at the freaking guns you got. Boil! <sighs> Kyle keeps hitting them weights. Skip! Yeah, it's that Michigan muscle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you can probably let that go. I put the hose on here because if you don't, it's gonna squirt everywhere. Ah, skate, skate, skate. And then this will also uh, make sure you get a 
a good bleed. All right, give her a few pumps. Yeah, oh, she's moving, is. so. There it is. So I was clamping that. All right, let go. That's good, bud. Good. So yeah, you, she's gonna lock up. So you work rear brakes only off of the hydro? Only rear brakes. Sick. So we're gonna move around to the front and bleed the front too. And that's gonna be 100% front braking on just the pedal. And then 100% rear braking on just the handbrake. It's not the right way to do it, but we don't care. It's gonna be fun. Come on down to the Hoonigan Brake Shop. We'll get y'all done up real good. JD Squared sent us a new care package today. I am really pumped to open it up. This is our new bender. We're gonna be able to do a lot more to shark cart now. Brand new model 54 tubing bender. Now shark cart's gonna roll. This is it right here, Kyle. Beast. Can't wait to use that. Look at this dude. Look at that guy. He's just taking bites out of pipes. Looks that easy. Don't mess with that dude. I'm so just so excited we unboxed everything. Stood back, took a sip. Since we've unboxed everything, that's a wrap!